Paris, France, July 2013. Scientists discovered an entirely new class of extremely large microbes called Pandora viruses. Up to 94% of the Pandora virus genome has nothing in common with other life forms on Earth. These huge Pandora viruses have a very high frequency of genes that don't correspond to any genes in other known organisms. While seemingly alien, Pandora viruses share one thing in common with all life on Earth, DNA. Those who endorse panspermia say that this supports a key part of their hypothesis, all life in the universe is based on DNA. Therefore, life on Earth is closely related to life everywhere. DNA is present throughout space, and we are a product of that DNA. The other species elsewhere in the galaxy are also the result of the same DNA. Then, very clearly, there's some symbiotic relationship between all of us. If the universe is based on DNA, aliens would be closely related to humans. Why do so many abductees report that their alien abductors are interested in human genetic material? Many abductees have discussed being taken on UFOs and subjected to medical experimentation. Witnesses talk about blood, sperm, and eggs being removed from their bodies to make us more compatible with them. Perhaps, one day, the two species will unite, and they will no longer be our gods, but we will be their equals. If aliens use these microbes to make us more like them, we will start showing signs of that genetic and physical evolution. In other words, our testosterone levels should decrease, we might become more frail and androgynous, and our intelligence could be enhanced. It's pointed out that these changes are already happening. Trends in human evolution show sperm counts going down as the world's population reaches 8 to 10 billion. Maybe we will become more like the aliens, which may mean we are more genetically compatible. If that's the path laid out, you could look at the development of higher intelligence as a kind of genetic Trojan horse, leading us to a point where it's easier to be genetically crossed with alien species. Skull number 44. Discovered in 2012, it weighs 2.8 pounds, 25% heavier than the average adult male skull. It has a cranial capacity of 1,500 cubic centimeters, 20% larger than normal, and is missing a sagittal suture. The connective tissue joint found between the parietal bones in all human skulls. This is just one of hundreds of strange misshapen skulls found on the southern coast of Peru, dating back to 1927. At this time, archaeologist Julio Tello first excavated a massive burial complex thought to have been built by the Paracas people who lived in the region from 800 BC to 100 BC. Julio Tello was the father of Peruvian archaeology, and in the 1920s, he discovered mummy bundles, each containing a person with an elongated skull. They were buried in family mausoleums, some as deep as 30 feet into the bedrock. Mainstream archaeologists say the elongation is likely due to head binding, a practice found in numerous cultures worldwide. But why elongate the heads of children? Ancient astronaut theorists suggest that head binding originated with primitive humans attempting to imitate extraterrestrial visitors. However, researcher Brian Forster, the assistant director of the Paracas History Museum, argues that head binding wouldn't account for all the anomalies in Paracas skulls. About 5% of the elongated skulls in Paracas are so complex in shape and size that it's hard to believe they're the result of head binding. Not only are they elongated vertically, but their eye sockets are larger. There are two holes in the back of the skull called foramen for blood and nerve flow, and their jaws are robust. Some skulls are 60% heavier than normal, with a brain capacity 2.5 times larger than normal human brains. If these elongated skulls aren't the result of head binding, then who or what were these mysterious beings? In 2014, mitochondrial DNA testing was performed on Paracas skull number 44, yielding surprising results. According to geneticists, some initial DNA testing has been done, and the results are startling. Certain DNA segments didn't match anything known to be human. It suggests that Paracas could have been an ancient bloodline related to Homo sapiens but not exactly Homo sapiens itself. When you consider extraterrestrials walking among us, these may be remnants of the so-called teachers who visited humanity in the distant past. Zurich, Switzerland, December 2019. Scientists announce an incredible technological breakthrough. This takes the form of a small plastic bunny. 
the seemingly mundane object hides an incredible secret. Like a living creature, the bunny has its DNA. By binding negatively charged molecules of biological DNA with positively charged particles of protective silica, Ehrlich and Grass created the world's first synthetic DNA. In the case of the bunny, scientists encoded the digital files to create the 3D printed object into the plastic. They can decode the information inside with even a tiny snippet and print a new copy of the bunny carrying the same synthetic DNA. This breakthrough is significant because it can store massive amounts of data. Current computers use zeros and ones for calculations, but DNA computing is more sophisticated. Mother Nature computes using DNA molecules. Base 4, A, T, C, G, rather than 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. And we can compute by hijacking this base 4 mechanism that Mother Nature has created and putting our programming on ATCG, ATCG. Experts say that once this technique is scaled up, massive amounts of data can be stored in any object, retrieved, and replicated, presumably forever. These are great alternatives for storing data because they don't need any storage energy. They can sit on a shelf and not degrade once you encode data into DNA. It's very cheap to replicate, so you can put petabytes of data into a droplet of DNA and make a billion copies very inexpensively. And if you have a redundancy strategy, lots of documents are good. DNA is also very compact. The amount of space it takes to store Wikipedia is just a few drops of liquid, and those could be embedded into fabric or paper, taking up almost no space. Although DNA data storage is still in its infancy, ancient astronaut theorists believe it presents an intriguing possibility. Could many out-of-place artifacts discovered worldwide have much more to offer than meets the eye? Might they contain information within them about whatever civilization left them behind? Many natural materials can conduct and collect information today, crystals, various types of stones, and even living organisms. Is it possible that extraterrestrials have embedded ancient sacred knowledge, some material that if we could extract this information, there could be a wealth of information ready and waiting at our fingertips? March 2018, a scientific paper sparks a sensation in the press. In it, a team of 33 scientists, including Dr. Chandra Wakramasinghe, claims that octopuses possess extraterrestrial DNA. What we find in the octopus genome is almost uncanny. It has something like 50,000 genes. Compare that with humans, which have something like 25,000 genes. The octopus is more complex than the human. And how did this complexity manifest itself? There's ample evidence to suggest that it came from outside. As scientists study octopi, they're amazed at what they're finding, and they're not seeing a connection to some ancestor of the octopi. These creatures were brought here in their entirety and put into our oceans. The octopus is a fascinating organism. Instead of just being centered in its head like ours, the octopus's brain is distributed, and there are these brains in its arms and the essential brain in its head. They're very adept at quickly changing their color to match their surroundings. It almost looks instantaneous to us. Some scientists have speculated that in the absence of humans, the animal best suited to evolve into the dominant species on the planet is not another primate, but the octopus. And there is one ability in particular that suggests the octopus could one day rule the earth. It can edit its genetic code. The DNA double helix is like a zipper. The zipper can be unzipped, and then another molecule is created called RNA. RNA transfers the information from DNA to proteins. So the octopus has the fantastic ability to edit its RNA. Thus, they can make new proteins. Although this ability isn't fully understood, it suggests that the octopus can adapt to its environment far faster than other creatures. RNA editing is mediated by changes in the background, usually temperature, for example, camouflaging skin, and tool use. The ability to edit its genetic code begs the question, is this extraordinary creature with three hearts and nine brains possibly not from Earth? Evidence can be found by examining mythological accounts from across the ancient world. We have to ask ourselves, is it possible that the ancients were aware that the octopus is genuinely alien to this planet? Is the octopus possibly related to a race of extraterrestrials that visited Earth thousands of years ago? Or did our ancestors encounter intelligent creatures resulting from alien experimentation?